It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Scott Budnick, founder of the Anti-Recidivism Coalition, along with Sir Richard Branson, founder of the Virgin Group. bio, I didn't think I would need to read it because I didn't think there was anyone in this room that didn't know who this incredible man is. But as I read through it, there were a few facts that I thought uh, were truly unbelievable. Uh, first, there are now more than 100 virgin companies worldwide employ employing approximately 60,000 people, which means he's in charge of the livelihood of 60,000 families around the world. I found that incredible. Number two, he's about to start commercial space travel this year? Yeah. We're going up. He's the United Kingdom's number one Twitter user. And he's the and he's and he's the world's most followed person on LinkedIn. But what I thought was absolutely incredible is that in 2004 he established his nonprofit Virgin Unite to tackle both social and environmental problems and strives to make business a force for good. Most of his time now is spent working with Virgin Unite, his nonprofit. So, yeah. <laughs> Richard, so uh, five years ago, I read a blog on virgin.com, which completely blew my mind. Um, you wrote and sent it out wide that uh, talking about how you hired former offenders and what great work they did for your company and how hard they worked and you encouraged other CEOs to hire former offenders. And then throughout the years, uh, I saw you really dive deeply into the discussion around the drug war. And every time I told somebody that you were coming to speak today, the first thing everyone asked is why does he care? And I'd really like to know why Richard Branson cares about this issue. Um, well, first of all, I'm not an expert at all in this issue. Um, I've come here to listen, to learn, um, and hopefully from, from learning um, to try to do more. Um, I, w I think uh, so many of us uh, mess up in our lives. Um, I was lucky I messed up when I was 19 years old. Um, I um, uh, thought I could get away with not paying some tax. It's not a good idea. Um, and ended up uh, a night in prison. Um, I was fortunate. My parents um, had a house. They were willing to mortgage the house. I didn't, I didn't have to spend longer in prison. Um, and I think you know, that's a system that's flawed. You know, why, why should in a, you know, people, uh, while they're waiting on bail, who can't afford it go to prison, and people who can afford it not go to prison, but that's another subject. Uh, you know, that moment, just being in prison, um, you know, made me, first of all, realize I didn't like the idea of going to prison. So fr from then on, I think I've managed to um, you know, make sure I make decisions where I can sleep well at night and, 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 and avoid that. But I've also just learned that um, if, you, uh, you know, if you give people a second chance in life, and, and I had a second chance, I wouldn't have been employing 60,000 people, I suspect, if I'd spent two or three months in prison. Um, if you give people a second chance, um, uh, they can do great things. And I think if you can give people the dignity of work um, when they leave prison, um, you know, if you don't just dump them, out, dump them on the street and tell them to make their own way to the nearest city, if you can give them a, a, a chance to um, stand on their own two feet, um, make people realize that they're loved um, and that they're cared for. And I thought what the lady said earlier about looking forward, not looking back, um, uh, is, is fantastic. So, um, so I think as many companies as possible um, you know, need to get out there and, um, and take people on and give them a chance. Um, and I think, um, I think they'll be surprised how successful it is. Thank you. So some might say uh, employing someone coming out of prison is a, is a risk. Some might argue it isn't. Um, I read you sold Virgin Records, which was your core business, and leaped into the airline business, which was not your core business, and that was a risk. Um, we have a couple hundred inmates sitting in the crowd today uh, that took some stupid risks and uh, have made some good decisions. 
Um, what advice would you give them in terms of what risks are worth taking and what risks aren't? Well, I mean, look, I've met, you know, maybe 50 or 100, um, uh, you know, fairly superficially when, when I came in. Um, and, uh, and it's fantastic that um, I think pretty well every, everybody in this room uh, is studying um, because, A, I think it'll make their time in prison a, a lot more interesting to study. Um, and B, it's going to give them that much, much um, better a chance of getting um, a good job when they get out. Um, it may even, you know, turn them in an, into an entrepreneur. I mean, the, the, the uh, you know, basically uh, an entrepreneur is somebody who comes up with an idea that can improve other people's lives and, and make their lives better. Uh, that's all a business is. And, and I think, you know, you, you people have got time here to think about, um, you know, when they get out, um, you know, what could, you know, do they have a hobby? Is it, what, what, what could they do to make other people's lives better? And so, you know, possibly rather than going and working for somebody else, they, they, you, people here could actually start a business when they leave um, and start in a small way. I mean, I, I started literally in a re really small way, um, you know, like handing out leaflets outside, um, um, outside uh, concert halls and, and selling, you know, selling music, getting, you know, getting the money in from the leaflets and then, and then sending the music out. And, you know, just one thing led on to another. So. Uh, you don't have to you dream big straight away. Just try to get the, the nuts and bolts of um, your business going. Great. Um, sitting in this room today, we have a lot of the decision makers in the governor's office and the Department of Corrections um, who are really guiding the system. Um, and working with them, I know that they really believe strongly in turning people's lives around. Um, but there's obstacles, political obstacles, a recidivism rate around 60%, 74%. If you're 18 to 25, um, if you're spending billions of dollars and failing seven out of 10 times, I'm sure you would shut that company down really quickly. Um, as a businessman and a concerned human being, what advice would you give to lawmakers and decision makers uh, about how to run this differently? Um, well, I've spent the last three years on something called the Global Drug Commission. Um, the Global Drug Commission was set up um, by uh, uh, President Cardozo of Brazil. Um, it has 14 other presidents on the commission. Um, it has Kofi Annan, who used to be Secretary of State. Um, and it has myself as, as, a, as, as a business leader. Um, and we spent uh, two years looking at the war on drugs. Um, and by the way, and the reason I'm going straight to drugs is that so many people uh, in American prisons started um, because, of, because of some element of the drug the drug problem, the drug problems, and um, and you know what we've found uh, is that uh, in particular in America, uh, the war on drugs has failed. Um, it, it, it's failed in particular um, the poorer communities in America, and that the, that there are alternatives, and yet um, America seems to continue, uh, you know, locking people up, having the most people in prison of. You know, more people in prison in America than in China, you know, which has got a um, much bigger population and, and, and it's much more, you know, you, you would have thought would be much more draconian. So as a businessman, what, what we did was we went and looked at other countries and we, we looked at, uh, to see whether anybody else was doing it better. Um, and um, Portugal had a major drug problem and 12 years ago, um, a very forward-thinking president said, um, we've got it all wrong. Um, if somebody uh, has a drink problem, we help them. Um, if somebody smokes too many cigarettes, um, we do our best to try to help them stop smoking too many cigarettes. Um, what's, what's, what's the difference between that and other drugs? So they said, okay, we're, we're not going to lock anybody up ever again for taking any kind of drugs. Um, what we're going to do is help them. Um, so. Learning from that, <laughs> um, you know, the, 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 the National Drug Commission are urging um, uh, countries all over the world to treat drugs as a health problem, not a criminal problem. Um, you know, there's somewhere like Russia that, that, you know, draconian treatment of people who, on drugs. They've got the biggest HIV pr problem in the world. Um, and, uh, and, you know, so if you give people clean needles, you can make sure they don't, don't contract HIV. You know, there are just so, so many benefits, I think, of taking that approach. Thanks. So now I really want to open it up to you guys. 
Um, specifically, uh, the inmates in the audience. Let's now open it up for anyone that wants to ask Sir Richard Branson a question. I'll tell you what, the first prisoner to ask, uh, when they get out, they can get a free ticket to London. Boom, right All there. All right, we've got him here. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello, Mr. Richard. Thank you for coming. Um, my question is, what inspired you or gave you the heart to hire an ex-convict? I think, I think it, 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 I, I, we were talking about this earlier, and I, and I think um, what's surprising is just that not more people are doing it. You know, the people in this room could be my, my children. They could be myself. Uh, they could be my, my brothers, my sisters, um, and, um, and when somebody uh, slips up in life, and, and I suspect quite a few people in here didn't slip up and are in here incorrectly anyway, uh, but when somebody slips up, um, they, um, uh, they should be given a chance. And, and it's not only the right thing to do, um, but I think it's the right thing for society as well. Um, and. Uh, and instead, well, you know, in America, when people come out of prison, uh, you know, they're, they're continued to be punished. You know, you, they can't get food stamps or, uh, you know, I, I think getting mortgages and other things are, are, are difficult, which, which puts, puts people on a path to reoffending again. So, um, so uh, and it works. You know, I mean, some of our best, um, you know, best employees at Virgin are people who've been in, in, been in prison, including myself. Branson, Mr. Bundy, thank you. Uh, I'm a parent. I have three children. I've been in prison for 19 years now, and the biggest difficulty that we face is communication between myself and my children. Um, this is 2014, and the world is the world is changing technologically. Have you ever considered tying together social good with an entrepreneurial opportunity to to bring modern day communications to prisoners to help between prisoners and our children? Well, I mean, I, ha I hadn't considered it until you just mentioned it. Um, uh, they, they, but, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the best ideas come from, um, you know, uh, discussions like this. Um, uh, and, I mean, it must be incredibly tough for you, all of you in this prison. Um, you know, right, it's so far from anywhere. Um, uh, you know, for for for, fam for families to have to leave to come and live close to you is is, is heart wrenching for them and, and the kids, um, and obviously a lot of families will not uh, you know will not leave wherever they are to come and live close to you. So um, you know, so you know, it, it must be it must be horrendous um, the 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 um, uh, you know the burden on the families and the you know to stay close and the burden on you to you know lose your lose your families from staying close. So. Um, so I think anything, anything that can be done to um, enable fathers, mothers um, to stay close to their children, um, it's, it's, it's obviously really important. And um, I mean, I, I would, uh, you know, I would urge the warden, who's very liberal-minded thinking, to maybe work with you and try to trying to come up with a program, and maybe could be an example to other other prisons in the years to come. Um, you know, if we can help a bit, we'll, you know, we, we, we'd love to try to help a bit, but um, within, within whatever we're allowed. But it's, you know, I can see how important it is, and you know, we, you know, um, be, be entrepreneurial. You know, get, uh, maybe maybe get a few, maybe get a few of the other students together, try to work up a work up a plan. Uh, you know, it may not be, it may not, it may be too late for you, um, um, but it can help other other people later. So, and good luck. I think it's important to note too that, that this prison uh, is the first prison in the entire state to bring in technology and start an online college program. Um, it's now planning to be replicated to all the different yards of this prison and then throughout the department. So it's the first time in the history of the California prison system where they had let inmates touch a computer, especially a commuter, computer that's connected to the internet, to take college classes. I know there's talks about having Skype visiting for families that can't come here. There's also a new program that Millicent Tidwell and Roger Meyer started 
where you can read a book to your child and send it home on disk. That's being rolled out in the next couple months. So I think the ball's rolling slowly, but rolling as it, regard, as it relates to technology. And I think with Mr. Branson's idea, his help, I think we can really kind of push the system to move this quicker. So the, I think the we're Sky, the, the Skype idea just seems like a no-brainer because you know it doesn't cost the prison anything, um, uh, and you know for, for families that um, you know that, that can't travel, um, you know it's, such, it's quite a strain on the families to travel, you know um, hours and hours, you know from from other cities. You mentioned the draconian sentencing that we have in this country. My question to you is. Do you think our behavior while incarceration should be considered in regards to our release date? No, look, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that the pay, behavior whilst you're in prison should, um, should be, you should get benefits from it. And um, uh, would you mind telling me what you think? Well, I think that seeing that we're a part of such a groundbreaking idea as far as the educational system within California Department of Corrections, being able to obtain degrees now and to really change our aspect and the way we think and what we're able to accomplish, I think that it would be even more motivational for us if there were, if it was considered, like for instance, we have, like I said, the college program here has completely changed not only the way I feel about learning, but the way I look at life. I understand now that what I do as an individual affects not only me, but everyone around me. I didn't understand that when I got locked up. I thought it was just all about me, me, me. But now that I have some type of education, I understand that we are all part of, we're equally a part of a bigger whole. So I was just, like I said, I think that if those behaviors were considered, you know, I came in, I didn't have a college degree. Now, you know, thanks to the system, in June I will receive four degrees. I think that that should matter. And if I have a pattern of not being disciplined, no disciplinary actions or anything like that, I think that that should consider that should be considered on an individual basis. Uh, you, you put it far more eloquently than I could. <laughs> Thank you. It is fantastic what Armwood's doing. I mean, they, they uh, you know, to, um, I mean, it seems to be setting an example to uh, the rest of the prison system in California as far as uh, this educational, uh, the, the educational, um, policy it's got here, so um, it'd be great if other, other uh, establishments can learn, but anyway. Thank you.